Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we have to talk about how boomers are ruining the car market and increasing prices on cars, especially brand new cars. But before we get in this video, as always, if you're gonna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And then if you wanna see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Let's get into it. Now, before we dive into the data, I do need to mention this data comes from hedgescompany.com. It's demographic data, basically on who is buying a car. And I find the data absolutely fascinating because it is showing a trend that I see in real time. And we're gonna go over the data and then we'll talk about what this means for the car market. So first off, the average age of a new car buyer is 53 years old, hence the title about uh, boomers. But more interesting than that, people that are 55 plus have increased in the amount of new car market share by 15% since 2000. So what this means is that the average person buying a car, 53 years old, and people that are above 55, they're starting to buy more and more cars as time goes on, and people that are younger are buying fewer and fewer new cars. It's almost like we have an affordability crisis happening here. But Let's go over the age demographics with different car types. First off, with brand new SUVs, 65 plus makes up 31% of the people buying new SUVs. 55 to 64, 26%. People that are 25 to 54, 43%. And people that are under 24 years old make up less than 1% of people buying new SUVs. And so again, this just shows that most of the people, right over 50% of the people buying new SUVs are over 55 years old. But obviously SUVs don't make up the entire car market even though SUVs are a pretty large portion of the car market. There's also stuff like sedans. Well, people that are again 24 and younger, they only make up about 1% of sedan purchases. 25 to 54, 51%. 55 to 64, 21%, and 65 and up, 27%. So you can see, again, the older age demographics make up a large portion. Now, I wish that this data was split up um, more so than 25 to 54. I wish they did like a 25 to 35 and then, you know, a 35 to 54 just because, like, I doubt there's a lot of 25-year-olds that are buying new cars, but I'm sure there's a lot of like 35-plus-year-olds that are buying new cars. But anyways, with new trucks, 24 and younger, less than 1%, 25 to 54, 50%, 55 to 64, 23%, 65 plus, 26%. And then with electric vehicles, this one is pretty interesting. Um, less than 1% with 24 and younger. It's like all the you know younger people that you'd think would be jumping into electric cars because that's what they're all about. They're not buying them because they can't afford them. Uh, anyways, 25 to 54, 46%, 55 to 64, 22%, and then 65 and up 32%. And then plug-in hybrids um, and just regular uh, hybrid vehicles, 24 and younger, less than 1%, 25 to 54, 54%, 55 to 64, 22%, and 65 up, 23%. I think you guys get the trend at this point. If someone's under 24 years old, they're not buying a brand new car. And if they're 25 and up, then yes, they do make up a large portion of the market share. But again, I wish this data, like I said, split up the ages a little bit more because I'm sure that it's, you know, the people that are 25 to 35, I doubt that those people are buying brand new cars. I'm sure that there's some, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's probably not a lot. Now to put the nail in the coffin, so to speak, when we look at income with car buyers, this really kind of paints a picture of what we are seeing economically within the car market. With new SUV buyers, 31% make under $50,000 per year for their household income. 19% are in the $50 to $75,000 price or income bracket. 10% are in the $75 to $99,000 income bracket. And 40% the largest demographic purchasing brand new SUVs make over $100,000 per year. Now, if we dive into new sedans, under $50,000, 39%, 50 to 75, 18%, 75 to 99, 9%, and then 100,000 and up, 34%. So there's actually more people buying new sedans that are under $50,000 per year, which makes sense because they're slightly more affordable on average. New trucks, <laughs> this one's pretty crazy. Under $50,000 a year, 37%. 
uh, 50,000 to 74,000, 20%, 75 to 99,000, 10%, and then 100,000 and up 33%. This one kind of confused me because trucks are really expensive, like the, some of the most expensive new vehicles that people can buy. But apparently people that aren't making as much money, again, 50,000 and under, are the ones that are going for the uh, pickup trucks. Maybe it's because they're trying to show their status. Anyways, um, plug-in hybrids. Under 50,000 uh, income, 21%, 50,000 to 74,000, 12%, 75,000 to 99,000, 10%, 100,000 and up, 57%. <laughs> that actually makes quite a bit of sense. Um, and then EVs, pretty similar story. 50,000 and under, 20%, 50,000 to 75,000, 16%, 75,000 to 99,000, 4%. And then get this, once you go up over 100,000, 60% percent, which again, that just describes what we all talk about in the EV market. It's only like the super rich people that are buying EVs. Now, the last bit of data that I want to go over is home ownership. So with a new SUV, 93% own a home. With a new truck, 93% own a home. With a new sedan, 90% own a home. So now we have to answer the title of the video. Does this in fact prove that boomers are running the car market? Are they literally causing car prices to go through the roof? And the data shows that, yeah, that's pretty much what is happening. Because again, the average new car buyer is 53 years old. And again, within a lot of the segments, a lot of that market share is being bought up by people that make over $100,000 per year. So it's older, wealthier people that are buying brand new cars. And it, that's why automakers are focusing on building like so many like nice luxury versions of cars is because they're trying to appeal to older, wealthier buyers that are looking for that type of vehicle. Because again, and those are the people that are currently buying cars. So yes, boomers, you have in fact run the car market for the rest of us. But again, this was bound to happen because again, it's called the baby boomer generation for a reason. It was a baby boom. There's a lot of people in that generation. And so you have a very large generation with a lot of wealth that is currently going into retirement. And so of course, like they're going to be buying up not only cars, but a lot of other things. And so I don't necessarily see this as like all negative because yes, it is going to cause the prices of certain things to go up, but this is also like a lot of stimulus for the economy because you have a generation that is just, again, spending money like crazy, especially you know, boomers that are in like the higher income brackets. Like you look at the data of like super wealthy people and they are just like, even though they lost a lot of money over the course of 2022 with everything that happened, they're still spending like crazy. It's, it, it just doesn't stop whatsoever. So it's, it's, it's kind of good for the economy when it comes to stimulation. I guess it's not good for the whole inflation side of things. But I think this data also shows that we have a huge affordability issue within the car market because, well, People that are making around what the average American household makes, which is like $70,000 per year, they aren't buying brand new cars because they cannot afford to buy a brand new car. Like if you live in the US today and you as a household make like $70,000 per year, and let's say that you have, you know, two kids, which I don't think that's too crazy of a stretch to assume, then like you can't, with how much housing costs and how much everything else costs, like you can't afford to buy a brand new vehicle and the average brand new vehicle costs fifty thousand dollars and so i do think that automakers need to do something and i understand that like there's only so much they can do with the resources they have and with the people that are buying versus the people that aren't buying but i don't know i feel like there has to be something done to try to pull in these you know the demographics that currently aren't buying brand new cars because you know although we have the baby boomer boom happening right now within the car market it's not going to last forever because eventually baby boomers are going to stop spending right they're going to get old enough where they just start you know obviously passing away because that's what happens with humans we, we don't live forever and so the money's eventually going to dry up and once the money dries up, it's like, well, the next generation, and, and what you, when you look at like wealth between generations, like the next generation is probably not gonna have as much money as the baby boomers. And so it's like, you're gonna have to start making more affordable cars if you wanna keep selling cars. Let me know what you guys think about this data. Let me know what you think about this whole situation with baby boomers buying up all of the vehicles. And if you happen to be a baby boomer, I love you. My parents are baby boomers, so <laughs> whatever. Anyways, I'll see ya.